My name is Jeremy Kirkland, and this is Blamo. My guest this week is the actor, writer, and comedian Eugene Cordero. You know his acting from the massive shows like Loki, Mandalorian, and Good Place, and his voice from shows like Star Trek, Lower Decks, and Central Park. Honestly, he's everywhere these days, and this week, he's on the pod. We chat his early days of improv, getting jacked at the gym, being the ambiguous ethnicity, and the best clothes to work out in. Oh man, we go all over the map. This is one of my favorite episodes. Dive in. Real talk, we just moved into this house almost a year ago. And late at night, you know, I'll get up and I think I hear my daughter crying because we have like, she's almost four and we have like a little monitor in our room. Yeah. And I'll wake up and I'll hear some noises and it's no one. Yeah. But real talk, the woman who (gasps) sold us this house, her husband died in this room. No. Thank you. Horrible way to start a podcast. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so, great. but anyway, there is no video. You're okay. safe. Um, but no one can see that you're like jacked as fuck. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to let as many people know how thick my neck is. <laughs> so I'll just bring that up a bunch. Yeah. I, well, it's funny cause earlier your podcast mm-hmm. dumbbells, yeah. like that is like my gym. Like that's my gym music. That's your gym hang. It is. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've been going to the gym every day. Well, five to six days a week since January, and um, I'm I'm been chronicling my my transformation. And dude, we gotta yeah. get you on the on the dumbbell set. Dude, I'm I'm down. I I have dead serious been been really like carving through all this stuff. And then when there's not a pod, because I mean, you guys obviously have other lives and other stuff going on. I'm like, I don't know what I'm <laughs> doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny yeah uh, so good no i mean it's great it's it's really really good and it's it's been extremely helpful because you i mean i used to see you do improv way back in the day in new um, york or in la in in new york yeah oh so back in the day yeah so i mean because yeah. i think right like right when i moved um this was like early aughts mm-hmm. super early aughts i was uh You know, I had dated this woman who was really into improv. And -hmm. funny enough, I was talking to Gabris, and he was like, yeah, I was her coach. And I was like, oh, snap. Oh, my Uh, gosh. Hilarious. (laughs) Yeah. But she, so we we would go see, like, ASCAD, and we would see, uh, you know, it would be the Mansukis Brothers and Four Track. And, you know, it was basically, like, all the dudes like you guys now who are just running Hollywood. That was back when, I I hate to say it, but it was back when, like, it was still a new thing. It was, like, very, like, 2000s felt underground. Improv was, like, at, you know, it was packed over there in Chelsea under the Gristides, but it was was still kind of, like, this club to go to. Yeah. And everybody who was improvising felt like it was this club that you were a part of. Now it's, like, improv is kind of, like, its own you know thing now where there's a bunch of different schools there's a bunch of all these things and it's like branched off yeah no i think you're right because it it started to get like because i i was like oh i'm gonna do magnet and i'm gonna you know because like um oh like george basil so i worked with george at apple this is like or again like in new york and he was like oh you should do improv he's like it'd be fun he's like go sign up at magnet and i started Mm -hmm. doing that stuff and I, my mind was blown because I was like, oh, there is a serious art to timing and listening and reading people. And you can't just come up and be like, I got a funny joke about my mom did this thing. And it's like, no one wants to hear that right now. That's not in the scene. You're not amplifying everyone. Yeah. But now I feel like improv's gotten to the point where because it was not that, that people are starting to do that now. And that's starting to be okay. Like there's just, it's oh, just, right. it's just evolving into a different thing. I mean, it does feel very like back in my day when I was doing <laughs> improv, um, we were still doing voices like this and it was okay. <laughs> well, it was cause I think like at the time it had blown up cause of whose line is it anyway. Right. It was yes, like with yeah. Drew Carey and mm-hmm. those guys. I mean, they, that was like, 
That show still slaps, by the way, if you watch oh, yeah. reruns of it. Yeah. Yeah. But like that's, you know, and that kind of short form thing is kind of coming back because people's attention spans are less. So like <laughs> those quick, those quick witted moments are like now the thing where, you know, the UCB magnet long form thing was huge then because that was also when, well, later in the aughts and then yeah. early, like, you know, in 2010 and whatnot, then it was like Parks and Rec and The Office and that kind of like subtle, you know, um, seeing it all play out over a half hour thing, which was what long form was, where it was just like you were doing basically an improvised play. Right. You know? um, but I feel like that, comedy, kind of comedy in general got way better at like, the office era yes. of, because I mean, before then it was, look, mad about you. Great show. Seinfeld. Great show. But it wasn't, it didn't feel as like envelope pushing. It was more of like formulaic where, especially because a good friend of mine uh, is a TV writer and he will also review a lot of like old Chuck shows. Laurie, is that your buddy? No, it's your, Brett your White. buddy. Your oh, buddy yeah. is, is the Chuck Lorre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he, he like turned me back on to the odd couple and like the original odd couple. And you're like, oh, this is great. But it's like, you know, 10 second dialogue joke, da 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 joke. It's like a rhythm, you mm -hmm. know? And I don't think comedy really like felt as sporadic and bizarre until like the Michael Schur sort of era yeah. of TV. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know. I mean, that the obviously this isn't a show about comedy at all, but I mean, as you are a phenomenal comedian and performer, I can't oh, thanks, help but dude. bring it up. Yeah. Well, plus it's funny because I told my my wife, you know, doesn't listen to the show, but always gives me oh, notes. What a is... great supporter! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> She's... I don't. I don't listen to the show, but I can hear you from the other room, and this is my thoughts of your side of it. Bingo. Because when and when I told her, I was like, "Yeah, I'm talking to Jean Cordero." She's like, "Oh my god." She's like, she listens to comedy. Bang, bang. She, she actually forwarded me. She was like, one of the best things I ever saw was, and I didn't even see this. It was the Kroll Show skit about the like Chick-fil-A. Oh, on. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, damn. I'm like, that's, that's deep in there. That's deep in the archives. Yeah. Um, but I mean, from, because I mean, I watched Lower Decks and Tacoma. Mm -hmm. and And obviously, like, I saw you on the office and in good place and stuff but it's like it's been really like sick to watch your your career just go like everywhere i mean oh, it, thanks, you're just like dude. the guy yeah uh that's um, nice to hear and it's nice to be that guy to be honest <laughs> i'm not i'm not as i'm not a, gonna sugarcoat it in a way that it's like yeah i feel lucky and um and happy that i've i've had the opportunity to do it but you know that's for I, I mean, I feel like the trajectory happened because of the way that the world was working at the time. But, you know, I'm happy that I'm here now. Well, wait, what do you mean? Well, I mean, well, I mean, this could sound totally like uh, we're getting into the real shit. <laughs> OK, but, you know, like back then in the it, in the UCB New York days and doing improv, like if you look at that stage you know, I'm one of the only people of color that were on that stage. You know, it's like me, Colton Dunn. Very true. You know, um, and then shows like The Office and even shows like Who's Line and, um, and SNL and everything that, you know, and back then, especially in the 2000s, it was like SNL, being on SNL and Amy right. was on SNL and Horatio was on SNL and all these people that were like from the kind of UCB vibe right, right now, wriggle. Like it was just like, you know, that was the thing. And then, you know, me and Gabris and Pally and Ben Schwartz and everybody were coming up and going like, great. But it was also me, Pally, Ben Schwartz, Gil Ozeri, yeah, you know, John Gabris, John Gimberling. Like, it was just kind of like, um, it was me and a bunch of very cool, but very white dudes, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so start so when we were doing these shows in new york and and you know and then it was like the people that i rolled with the most which were like charlie sanders and bobby moynihan it was like you know i was still kind of um when it came to auditioning even for like because back then it was like everybody auditioned for commercials then it was the cool thing where if you're up and coming in comedy you were in like a funny commercial <laughs> 
you know, as like True. the guy, you know, yeah. eating popcorn weird or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because then commercials started becoming kind of geico y in that way of like, this is yeah, weird. The, you the know? caveman era and stuff yeah. too, right? Yeah. Okay. So then like, um, so, but even me booking a commercial was tough because it was like, they needed two white guys and then another guy. And then maybe they'll try out this weird Asian guy that you're looking at or whatever. And, or, you know, it'd be a white guy and a black guy. And then, uh, you know, Hispanic guy and then other, or they needed the Asian guy to be, look really Asian or all of these things. And, you know, and I'm not Hispanic and they'd want me to speak Spanish. And I'm like, no, man, I like, there's oh, not a God. box. So then it was just kind of this weird thing where then everything I'm auditioning for had to be open to all ethnicities and blah, blah, blah. And then I, so then that's when I started kind of booking. Well, I mean, it was, I started working a lot more once I moved to LA and there was right. a lot more work available um, for at that time, whatever my type is. Yeah, because um, you, you would say, and I mean, you would even do this in some of your improv shows, you would talk about that you were the ambiguous yeah <laughs> ethnicity yeah which would you know and and coming up doing key and peel and doing the curl show and doing all those stuff and doing sketch in new york it was at the time great because it allowed me because i was having such a hard time um being put into a box that i really worked hard on playing other ethnicities Right. Um, in sketches so that it's not so that we made sure that the joke wasn't the fact that A, there's an accent that I I have, or B, that I am not that ethnicity and I'm playing that ethnicity. Right. Um, and so and because you didn't know what I was, I feel like the more that I could be honest with it that the more you could believe that I am and it's not even a question. Or it might be a question of like, is he, you know, but he is Hispanic, so it's fine that he's doing it. It's like, well, if I fooled you enough that it feels that real, then I'm doing my job at that time in sketch. Right. Um, so then, you know, doing sketch shows and doing, you know, um, starting to get that work in various sketch shows, people, I was getting cast so that I could be ambiguous. Interesting. So that gave me the opportunity to kind of be in that world for a while. And and now, you know, in current times, obviously I would love for the, all of the parts to just read Filipinos, you know, a yeah. Filipino male, but you know, that's still not happening, but I, you know, I feel good that I'm at that point in my career too, where I'm just like, well, it doesn't matter what it says, or let's take that out of it and just book me, you know, as me, but yeah. yeah. Cause I, I feel like too, as an aside, I mean, whether you realize it or not, like you're, you're a name, you know, like it's you're that's Eugene really Cordero cool. and you're yeah. a, you're also a Eugene Cordero type person. Like when they're casting, they're like, we want a person like this. That's really, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel uh, that's uh, really flattering and very cool. And I, when I do hear that, I hope that I get to go in for those parts. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. Like, I'm, I'm reading for the part that's, that's me, that, yeah. that's like Hi. me. So hello. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're looking for a Eugene Cordero type. So I'd like to read. My name is Eugene Cordero. Like, oh, uh, no, this is. I don't yeah. know. This oh guy wow! Is. He's jacked not, now. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't want this version of you. Yeah, like he, he's super healthy. He had a glow up period. Is this okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, that um, happened too. I think that was part of it too. You know, what the glow up? Yeah, yeah, just kind of like the change in mentality. I think happened for me too. In in there, in like getting into fitness and getting into taking care of myself. I think also mentally made me take care of myself yeah because like how what did bring you to like get into fitness because it, it i know that it wasn't you didn't like start out that way i mean from yeah. like early stuff where it's like you and schwartz and you know bobby moynihan or whatever playing basketball yeah like you've you've you I mean you're jack now you're, you're marvel superhero now <laughs> well i mean i think a lot of it was uh, um I think it was a lot of mindset things going on too back then where people that were doing comedy and what I've already accepted it for myself mm -hmm. as an actor was that I was a character actor. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just air quoted um, for listening. Uh, yeah. I just air quoted for um, the sake of myself and for you. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, like even I, you know, I went to college for, for theater and you know was really focused on it but i where'd you go to school uh marymount manhattan college oh gotcha 
uh, and studied acting and, you know, did the whole thing. And, and that's what I consider myself. Like, even though I do mostly comedy, I'm still like, oh, well, I'm an actor first. And like, you know, I, I feel like uh, I'm always going to play this char a character because I'm like um, a person of color and also not built like um, the leading man or whatever. Sure. Um, and that was all growing up, you know, like, you know, I, I played some sports, but I wasn't as good as, you know, my older sister who was like varsity, everything all yeah. growing up. So I just kind of fell into that role of like kind of sh schlubby, not schlubby, but just like, you know, I had weight on me and I like to eat and I like to, you know, have fun. And I think that's what comedians were like a lot, you know? Yeah comedy people it was about going out afterwards and eating a crazy meal and drinking a lot and like you know it's like you know stand-ups and improvisers and stuff weren't like worried about their health it was more worried about like what's funny right and, um and also back then i felt like having a little bit more weight and being able to relate to everybody was part of the excuse of getting oh. healthy and i think i like you know i'd want to and i'd feel kind of like garbage but you know it, it was still kind of fun and you know it's also your 20s so you're like i can do whatever i want <laughs> this is true um and you kind of could and then you kind of have to like grow up and um i think it like really happened to me when um a mix of things i think partially it was um i couldn't be put in a box as far as work was concerned and also I had gotten engaged and my sister just got married and I looked at those pictures mm -hmm. and this was after like, I was in New York for a while and I was, uh, I, I got really into Muay Thai kickboxing even oh. in New York. Wow. Okay. Um, and I was getting in, in some good shape there, but then our shows at night, you know, like we'd have a show at, you know, 8 PM and then the next show at midnight, it was just not sustainable to do both. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I was starting to like get hurt doing the active thing because I wasn't at the place that I knew how to schedule my life correctly. Right. Um, and, um, and then, you know, it became a thing where got engaged, went to my sister's wedding, all this stuff, things fit weird. And then you want to commit to like, I know this is so sappy too, but it's like, you commit to somebody and, you know, you say you're going to be around as long as you can. And I think the way that I felt and the, I was like, this is not sustainable. I'm right. Know, like, and then you go and you move to L.A. and you start going on hikes with people and you're running out of breath, you know, um, halfway up the hike. And you're like, yeah. what's happening? <laughs> um, I want to keep hiking. And also, it's just like I've always I've always been like a huge fan uh, as a kid of wrestling and stuff hell yeah and like what what kind of shape those guys were in and, and you know like they have that kind of superhero thing and it's just like man that will never be me and then you're like why not when you get older you're just like why can't it be and why can't i try to consider myself an athlete rather than you know an exerciser <laughs> or you know right um so I, I think I just changed mindsets in that way and um, and then just took my time and slowly took that journey. And, you know, that's when I also got into like Muay Thai out in L.A. and really into CrossFit out in L.A. and doing like more lifting stuff and, and saw the results and got excited about where I was um, as far as that work ethic went and how well, I felt. Truly. Yeah. I mean, because like the same for me, I had. My biggest thing happened when um, I was, my daughter wanted to play. She's, she's almost four and yeah. she likes when I like carry her like, you know, Superman and like, you know, kind of swing her around the house. And I did it a couple of times and I was just gassed. I mean, just gassed. And she was like, come on. And she was like, dad, you why are you tired? And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, I'm, you know, 34, you know, years old or whatever at that time. And I was like, I can't, this sucks. And yeah. that, and my, yeah. my dad, um, his, you know, he's in his mid sixties and he's mm -hmm. like a vegetable from Parkinson's. So he's got full blown dementia now. I mean, and it's, and I'm like, okay, like, so it like working out became a thing where it's like, I have to do this because I'm honestly like scared of like dying yeah, and, yeah. and not being able, cause it, you know, I always joke that for me, it was like, 
also more the vanity in the sense that like it's cool when you're wearing just a t-shirt and jeans and you look like James Dean and you <laughs> like are hulking out, you know, like yeah. that's that's a dope fit, but the 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 concept of just wanting to like be healthy for my family like yeah. did it's not great. Hit me. You didn't think that it would hit you until you <laughs> have a family. I, I think that's it too. I, I think it was once, you know, I was engaged in a, you know, and it, it still took time. Like, you know, my, um, I had to find what worked best for me and, and what fit my lifestyle and what I was excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, but also having that goal or that mentality of like, I'm here for them. And, you know, and the same with me, I, you know, my son is almost five. And I have a daughter who's uh, just turned one. And it's just like, you got to want to be able to play with them and holding them. And like, you know, a dude that's almost five, boy gets heavy, bro. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? That's true. So, yeah. And he still wants, and the whole day now his favorite thing is him on my shoulders. Oh, So, yeah. you know, I'm walking around with like, you know, 30 pounds of extra weight on my shoulders. I'm like, that, I, you know. Yeah. When people are like, oh, how do you keep doing it? I'm like, well. I mean, I have like a good hour and a half of walking around the zoo with, you know, a 30 pound weight vest on me, you know? Yeah. And it's weird. I think, yeah, my, because my daughter wants to be carried more now than she so did. And I'm like, you, you can run, you can walk. And she's like, yeah. no, like carry me. And I'm just like, what? Yeah. It's, it's gnarly. But, yeah. um, on, on that topic, as this is a show about clothes and all sorts of other goofy stuff. Yeah. What were the clothes that you were the most excited to get into when you started to get healthy? Um, I think I was truly into the jogger, you know, the the jogger and t-shirt look that you like, even that you're saying like that you can just go to a coffee shop in a jogger and a t-shirt and go like, this looks good, you know, <laughs> rather than having to layer up. Like I'm still, I'm still favorite style is fall weather. Mm. pair of shorts and a hoodie hoodie and shorts cap. weather classic classic can yeah live in that can live in that <laughs> forever you're in the you right know? city for it yeah <laughs> um so like you know i and and being able to switch that up all the time is great but like the jogger t-shirt which is also a very la thing yeah you know baseball hat and just kind of like live in it and not feel like oh man there's you know there's there's things going on <laughs> otherwise uh what, around my body what's your hoodie or hoodie uh, my hoodie my hoodie is just a straight up black hoodie mm -hmm. or um or um i'm going with like uh like an old school like champion you know a champion hoodie or Reverse anything weave. old school yeah or anything old school detroit like i'll wear like you know uh everybody versus you know, Detroit shit or, you know, like all that, you know, the lion stuff. Um, I like that bright. I like that bright blue. But, you know, I, I go pretty classic, classic white tea, classic black tea. Yeah. Well, um, that's the thing. You can. Yeah. You can do it. So like Rick Owens, who's, uh, you know, big weather jacket and uh, designer, he does a lot of avant garde stuff. People are like, oh, what's the best thing? And he he was basically like pretty famous for saying a quote he's like spend less on clothes and go to the gym instead he's like nothing's gonna make you feel better than like, having a good body boom yeah i know that right what a yeah. mic drop <laughs> and, and that's that's real and uh, yeah and being able to just put on a pair of, like classic like levi's like just putting on a pair of 501s and feeling like a dad but not a dad you're like cool i mean i have i have yeah i mean because you, you talked about that in one of your pods where it's like a dad athlete death lead or whatever like that's yeah. That is my vibe now more than ever. Cause I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah, I'm going to wear some shoes that have some really good arch support and yep. uh, some classic jeans at a, at a medium rise. Got to have a belt and I might tuck my t-shirt into it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> do a, do a classic. Sure. I mean, that's, that's the vibe. I'm, I'm into that classic vibe and then I'll rock like random. I'm weird, weirdly into like the Japanese street style stuff right now too, where it's like, welcome it, to the show. All yeah, right, like <laughs> in insanely crazy drop crotch pants. That, yeah, like Capital. Like, yeah, that are just like you know attached by a rope, and then would just like if I if it it gets pulled by my son, like my pants just come off, you know, because it's barely <laughs> a pant. Um, 
and then like some kind of like uh i've got like a bunch of shirts that is just like various origami shapes and shit that i'm just like cool you know oh, um damn. yeah and i'll just find them randomly at like you know i'll go down to like uh uh japantown in in la and stuff and be like oh this is what these guys are rocking i mean it's in a japanese size so i'm like a size like triple xl because it you yeah. know the shoulder length is where my neck starts you know what i mean yeah um but other than that i'm like oh these it, it's a cool i i like the fit just because it's just i can wear like my joggers and then just some crazy ass shirt and be fine with it yeah do you ever get uh like stuff from from the show like they let you they'll let you keep wardrobe or they always make you give it back you know they do but like i it, it's one of those weird things where i get worried that if i wore it out in public it would happen on the same day that episode dropped or something <laughs> or like a rerun was hey on, you're from tv right <laughs> and it's just like people thinking i don't have other clothes or something like that or i thought you had long hair in mandalorian <laughs> yeah yeah and could you imagine i just wore that i wore like the freaking stoke outfit like, yeah. with the long hair <laughs> went all out but yeah i think you know that's the kind of the weird thing even if i liked it i'm like well if it showed up good on screen i don't know if i need to wear it again just because i, I don't know that would make that'd be weird but you know it depends. Um, on Tacoma, every once in a while, they have us in a, just kind of like our life outfits. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'll take those things because they'll be comfortable and I'll just, you know, I won't be worried about them getting messed up because, you know, a kid vomits on them. Or yeah. yeah. I will say that on the Easter Sunday movie and, and Tacoma and stuff, when they give me a variety of kicks to wear. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, and they're like, oh, these didn't get cleared. I go, great. I'll take them. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that's the thing is a lot of that stuff too. I mean, I worked, I mean, I used to be an 829. And so like I, we would go and get stuff and it's like you would use the Amex or whatever and the Amex wasn't even going to take them back, right? Yeah. Like the store wasn't going to take them back. No one, so it was just like we would either donate them, um, which in most cases didn't work either because at the time there would be like stuff on it and the places were like, well, this is used. We can't even take it for that. So it's yeah. like, well, so you just give it to, and who is that? I did a shoot once and he was just like kidding this, just signing the stuff and giving it to, you know, people who worked on it. He's like, yeah, he's like, don't sell it on eBay, I guess, but here you go. You know, he's like yeah. signing clothes and handing it off. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, like a lot of the stuff just kind of goes, goes to waste in a way that yeah. it's just like, uh, you know, like. I, I try not to, I try to cycle my, my shoes and all that stuff whenever I can. And then, yeah, as far as like being on set and taking something, unless it was something that I'm like, this is a classic thing. Like if it is a pair of sure. like Levi's or a pair or like a jacket that I'm like, oh, this is kind of evergreen and I could wear, I could rock this on a regular basis and I like the way it fit, then great. I have not taken a suit yet. And I almost, I wish I had. Oh, in, in, in time. In time. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, there'll be, there'll be plenty of options for that. This episode is sponsored by Standard and Strange, your go-to in-person or online store for rugged yet elegant wardrobe staples. Founded in 2012, what was once a tiny store in a back alley in Oakland has evolved into one of the best retailers in America. With incredible brands and more, they have everything you need and are experts in every product they sell. Yes, they can help you fit those jeans or those boots online. Believe the hype. With locations in Oakland, Santa Fe, and now New York City, Standard & Strange has the deepest selection of the real McCoys around. If you want goods that go way beyond just reproductions of the most iconic pieces from the 20th century, the real McCoys is it. Every detail is considered down to the custom thread used in the flight jackets. And the biggest selection is at Standard & Strange. My personal favorite is their loop wheel sweats. Nice and short in the length for the classic look. You got, dude, if you don't have like two or three, you're just missing out. So visit standardandstrange.com forward slash blammo to learn more. And while you're there, check out their new arrivals. Standard and Strange, own fewer, better things. Standardandstrange.com. Um, on that note, what are the best workout clothes? Oh, um, so um, there is a uh, brand called Viore. 
You know Viore? Ooh, I don't. I, I'm v- going to write this down. Are, I think O-I, I th- something like that. Um, oh, yeah. But they, their workout shorts are like the most comfortable things in the world. Oh, dang. and they're like, yeah. So I rack that, and then I and then I usually go um, hoodie if I want to sweat it out, or I I'm I'm that dude who old t-shirts instead of throwing away, cut off the sleeves, and I work out in it. Oh, see, I haven't gotten to that point yet where my arms look good enough to actually like cut off the sleeves. Oh, buddy, <laughs> you start cutting off sleeves and stuff. Then your workouts last so much longer because you're just looking at your own. It's bad. <laughs> but this is but this is also me at home. This is me working out at home. I don't think I don't think I've ever rocked a cut off t shirt that I've made myself at an actual gym yet. Yeah, well, L A gyms are weird too because like yeah. I mean they're that those they are a scene. Like a yeah. friend of mine's like, yeah, I'm at the gym and I see this guy, and then I'm like, hey, like you want to cast me in this thing? Where it's like you're you're working. Yeah. If, if, when I go to the actual gym, when I'm when I'm at the gym, I wear the same thing consistently, which is I wear Viore shorts, but they're usually the black or like the black and gray ones mm-hmm. and then a black tee. And it's usually like, a, you know, like Under Armour, um, something along those lines. Um, but even like as long as it's just all black, I, that's what I'm that's what I wear. All black or black or like dark gray. Yeah. Um, that's my out in the world workout stuff. When I, I, I feel weird wearing bright colors at the gym because I'm like, I don't need attention <laughs> on me here. I'm trying to work, you know? True, true. But at home, you know, I've got like cut off t-shirts and, you know, because I'm just like, well, if this, if I sweat through this, I might just throw it in the trash. <laughs> Um, are you over or under on the whoop bands? Um, I don't know. Fair. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Cause eh, I, I'm just, um, yeah. Cause like, are you doing HRV and all that stuff and calculating like what your rest I, and all that? I be? am, but I, I feel, I think it depends on, um, like it, if, if you're, if it's, continuing to motivate you then do it um but if it becomes and and some people like if you have to if you have to gamify it so that you stay consistent then great um but then if it becomes like a new stress then that's when it gets tough oh yeah because like i think that's the thing and there's there's a ton of listeners we have like a slack group and stuff too of, of people in there and there's i think like one of the most active things is like there's like a fitness or wellness channel and people are all talking about like different sort of uh hacks for lack of a better term and whether it's like you know fitness bracelets or what are the things to like work out and i guess whoop had like a new thing and like a bunch of people are like oh i don't use anymore because now they own your data and you know like someone that works at whoop was in there and started commenting (laughs) and it's Yeah. yeah it's gnarly well, because then I, you know, because I'll have I have an Apple Watch on, and uh, yeah. you know, and and then I had like the I have one of those Aura rings, okay, NBA um, guy, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so then you have the Aura ring, and that's supposed to, you know, you wear that when you sleep to see how well you sleep, mm-hmm. and uh, and then it can also do heart rate, like everything does heart rate, and everything does this thing. So then when I started wearing it, um, I I sleep great. So I don't know why I needed a ring to tell me that. But then the <laughs> nights that I didn't sleep great, I was stressed out that I didn't sleep what great. And I like tried to go to bed earlier the next night so that it would be a good one again. And it was it, it became I got stressed out to go to sleep. Oh, damn. That's true. I mean, I think I'm obsessed with the data and I don't even know yes. what it means. Like yeah. I even brought it to my doctor where I was like, hey, my heart rate goes to like 38 at night and I got a low heart rate warning when I was sleeping. And he was like, yeah, you're healthy. And this is like, this is fine. He's like, you're, you're fine. But I was like, like super anxious and worried about it. And then I was waking up in the middle of the night because I thought that my heart would stop at night. Like I was going (laughs) nuts. And my wife was just like, take off your stupid bracelets. I know. Well, that, and, and I, and I feel that same way where I'm just kind of like, you know, I'll look at my watch for a second and it'll be like, 
you're one day away from the ch- finishing this challenge. I'm like, what challenge? <laughs> what challenge was I in? And then yeah. I'm like, I, I got to get, I got to finish it now. Now yeah. that I know what it is. And I'm like, I had no idea. What, what was it? It's just like some random challenge that came on my thing for the month. Yeah, the, the and, 15 day solstice yeah, sundown exactly. dance. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, I do the solstice sundown dance every day anyway. <laughs> so I don't need my watch to tell me that. You know yeah. what I mean? The worst is like you'll do a workout. And then I don't know if you have like you're like sharing your workout stuff with friends or like, mm. you know, my mom will text me and she'll be like, way to go today. Or it'll be like, hey, I, I thought, you know, I thought you were working. And I'm like, yeah, I'm working. Like, Get out of my shit. Like, what? I know. Yeah. I, the, only one, the only one I share it with is my wife. Smart. And, and, but my wife is constantly like, you worked out for two hours today? Uh, yeah. When did you have that time to do that? I'm like, whoops. <laughs> You're like, this is the moneymaker. This yeah. is it. <laughs> I made time. Um, um, but yeah. You're a supplements guy. What are the uh, I am. What are the supplements that you're doing? Are you doing the pea protein stuff? Are you doing the whey? What's which yeah? One? I I stick with whey protein just because I um it it feels fine for me. Like I I can I can uh, handle it. My body can handle it well, so I'm I stick to it. And I, I don't know. Like I try to get things that have less things in it. So the cleanest you know whey protein I can get with no added you know, anything. Yeah. Um, do you do the unsweetened get, stuff? I do the unsweetened stuff. Yeah. Like, what do you sweeten it with? I don't. Well, what I just, you, you're just drinking just, chalk. And yes. Yeah. It's just like my, I know I need to take this and I mix it in with like power greens and I just blend it with almond milk and that's it. And wow. then I just drink it and I've just gotten used to it, but I also drink my coffee black. So it's just kind of like that. That makes sense. Drink, I drink coffee all day, so I don't even taste that because I'm drinking that and then I'm drinking my coffee. So, like, if I put coffee in it, maybe that's the flavor. But yeah, because I, I uh, I'll do a coffee pod and yeah. the protein and a banana. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll add a banana or I'll add some kind of fruit every once in a while to yeah. make it, you know, taste a little bit better. But I got that Sun Warrior protein, and it was like the unsweetened. Sun Warrior, I don't know. I'm on Reddit and a bunch of other dumb sites, and people are like, oh, you got to try Sun Warrior. This is the best one. What is, is it whey protein, or is it? No, it's pea um, it's pea, and then it's a bunch of other stuff. And it's supposed yeah. to like make your stomach feel better, and you don't get like midday, whatever. And sure. uh, I did that with like MCT oil, and it was, it was gross. It was just the worst <laughs> thing I've ever tasted in my life. Uh, yeah, I, I I just I think I I just put the unsweetened uh, or just like the way I I have it unsweetened or unflavored just so I can if I do put it in oatmeal or something I can throw it in there and it doesn't taste different other than the chalkiness of it. Yeah. Um but you know that's that's my like food for fuel during the day type thing. Yeah. Um so that's that's my protein powder. And then other than that, um I um I take creatine uh and that's those are my two things. And then like my fish oils in the morning and yeah. just like a daily vitamin. But I I have I I have a hard time because I grew up uh as a bigger boy and love the idea of eating and 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 still you know um eat to um celebrate you know celebration yeah. eating going out yeah. to eat and all that stuff um i ha- i do i have to stay pretty constantly focused on what i'm putting into my body the, the rest of the time when it's not time right. to celebrate so i think i try to stay consistent in there because if not then i will have a tendency to just eat anything and whatever so i try to keep my um nutrition kind of locked into the same kind of caloric intake yeah regularly uh, which just sounds boring. No, no. I mean, that's yeah. that's actually more of, I think that's also stuff that's more practical because like I've talked to friends and they're like, yeah, I don't have an extra $2,000 a month, so I can't really like get healthy because it's like I'm yeah. on Saqqara and I'm using this and I'm doing this. I'm like, there's ways that you can just like, you know, not like have food delivery services and yeah. and still, you know, have a reasonable, you know, healthy lifestyle. 
but yeah and i mean a lot of that is meal prep and that kind of stuff or sucks. just like or just like leaving healthy things in your house that you know you are your go-tos and open up those drawers regularly and then make the drawer that has the stuff that you're not supposed to eat or that your kids eat in a different drawer than the one you open all the time yeah or the cabinet or whatever and that's pretty much what i do i'm like i know what the, where the kids foods are and i know what i eat and i like just grab from the same area all the time oh yeah that's smart yeah because yeah. then that way i'm just like oh this is what i'm eating and like my kids don't give a fuck what i'm eating you know <laughs> what i mean it's true yeah our like our daughter eats a bunch of you know healthy stuff of like dried fruits and nuts and stuff like that sure but whenever she's at uh, her preschool, I mean, they're, you know, because we get a little like push notification of like, hey, Harriet had this for lunch today. It was like cheese pizza and, da, da, da. and I'm like, oh, sweet. yeah, good for her. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> must be nice. But, you know, and, and, and I and I that that's the thing, like with with the kids, I'm not trying to like shame them into course, oh, what yeah. they're eating. I think they just eating is good and they're moving enough. And I think, you know, and my wife eats what we all kind of eat on the same world. I just kind of pack my plate with various different things, but I'm not, I, I, I'm trying to have that sustainable lifestyle so that I'm not like, uh, honey, you made pasta. I, I can't eat that tonight. You know, I'm like, no, I can eat it because I had this for my lunch. Right. I, I had my proteins, you know, and I have enough calories that I can eat a decent amount of this, but I can't go bonkers. Right. Know? Yeah. That's key. Well, I mean, I feel like because you'd mentioned with your kids and stuff like that was like more of a generational thing because I felt like I was shamed with all that stuff. But it also I wore pants that were literally size husky. Like who the who if I had oh, a man. time machine, I swear to God, I'd go back in time and punch. Thank God the, Sears went out of business, <laughs> right? Punch the dude in the face or person Fucking husky who invented yeah. husky sizing. What a fucked up thing. <laughs> I, I, I wish we could take back the word husky. To be positive, Let's, I think we can. We're going to reclaim I, husky. I would, I would like. I would call myself husky because what does that mean? I don't know. Like you're from. That's like farm strong, right? I think husky so. Husky is like farm strong. Because I think like now, like if you if even if you search husky, right? Like yeah, it's other than the dog breed, you get the uh, trusted quality electrical lineman tools. That's me, husky. Yeah, I'm husky. An, I'm an electrical lineman tool. <laughs> Um, all right, we're starting to wrap things up. Um, wanted to go through these other questions. So, yeah, what is the last piece of clothing that you bought? Um, last piece of clothing I bought um, was uh, a pair of uh, sneakers. Um, you sneaker guy? They, uh, well, they were a pair. They were workout shoes. They were. Um, they were a pair of um, strike. Motion is the name of the brand. Strike Motion, man! You got all the cool underground. Yeah. I'm writing this stuff yeah. down too. Um, and their um, Strike Movement, Strike uh, Movement, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, are these flat shoes? Kind of. They're like um, they were they were created to be able to use, you know, as running shoes, lifting shoes, all that kind of stuff. Right. And I I just like, you know, they. Kind of like Allbirds and all of those brands have kind of created the same type of sneaker. Oh yeah, to look Silicon kind of, Valley, yeah, cool guy. Uh, Silicon Valley, and these ones are actually ones that are used by people that <laughs> work out <laughs> um, regularly. And they, uh, I have a little bit of caveman wider feet, and they just feel good. Um, you know. Because I was trying to find sneakers that worked, uh, workout s shoes that worked best, that were no longer Reebok, CrossFit brand, yeah, you know, whatever um, sneakers, and ones that I could wear, um, like if I'm traveling a bunch, that I don't have to bring a bunch of pairs of shoes if I'm on location for like a week. Right. I can wear like one pair of sneakers that I can work out in, and also they look good enough that I can wear with my jeans and whatever. So. Um, these are that kind of style and, uh, and they're awesome to work out in. So the fact that that's what they are mainly and they work out great and then they also look good and they don't look like I'm wearing a pair of sneakers, you know, like I'm wearing workout yeah. shoes 
Yeah, you know, guys showing up with uh, gym shoes to the to the Loki press tour. You know, yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, what is a piece you find yourself wearing the most? What I I wear um I wear a Detroit Tigers hat all the time. Um, the fear of God hat, hat or just the OG? Yeah, no, just the OG. Okay, just the OG. Um, and then uh, and then. A uh, and then a white tea always. I will always grab a white tea. What's your white tea? Um, What's your white tea brand? Um, my white tea brand is, um, well, is uh, Uniqlo. 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 Yeah. Well, That's it depends right, right? on which region of Japan you're from, but yeah, Uniqlo Ooh. would be would be yeah, yeah. Uniqlo. Um, just because again, if my kids throw food on me, I can. Get another one, yeah, or I could buy a three pack or whatever. Um, I'm I'm loving those, um, because there there's a while I I did like uh, is it True Classics? Is that another one of the uh, online like buy a bunch of oh t shirts that yes make, you know that you can get in a subscription thing? And yeah. I'm like, why do I need a subscription of t shirts? It's like how how did these people find me too? It's like damn it, Instagram, yeah. where it's like all of a sudden yeah. it's like. Why don't I? Yeah, I I see myself in a candle subscription company. I'm like, sure, I burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need I need my um I need my my car smelling nice and looking like a piece of bark. You know? <laughs> I know. I I bought that 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 thing to drift. Is that what you're referring to? Because yes, they yeah, got yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, look at this piece of bark that is. But then my hands, like when I put it in there, my hands smelled like that scent for like a month and a half i know exactly and i kept having my fingers near my nose because i was like what is this scent and everyone's like what do you like like do you just do a bump or something and i'm like no yeah well i'm trying to smell i can't get the essential oil. why do you smell like the outdoors (laughs) you've been inside for 18 months yeah yeah damn it but that's the thing and then i remember doing that with the t-shirts and i'm like oh man i don't i just i need one that fits and i i'm one of those guys who now I get, you know, a t-shirt from uh, Uniqlo and I'll just like buy like six of them. And then those are the ones I have until they look filthy. Right. Right. That's, that's the and way to do it. And then I cut the sleeves off. Yeah. Oh, th- there you go. Then they go then to the I next the level. sleeves off and then they go to the next level. <laughs> and they're covered in weird stains. Yeah. And I'm working out in them. But yeah. So... That's what I, I rock. I rock that. Um, uh, and then I'm really into like these t-shirts and hats and stuff from a company called uh, Kuyate, which is like a Filipino brand out here in LA that uh, is. Uh, I'll put that in the notes. And, yeah. And I think it's just, you know, anytime I can like support like small Filipino businesses, I'm like, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. I'll, I'll rock your gear. I don't need anything back other than just you know the word and that's cool that's awesome that's yeah. really cool um do you do you work with a stylist or anything at all or are you just i don't yeah i don't and um i love i love seeing people's style and i just i and i enjoy clothes so much and whenever i'm on set and they are like this is a weird choice i'm like let's do it <laughs> and then we do it and i think it's so cool i'm like why do I, you know it's just you just don't make those choices for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're thinking of your everyday rather than you're thinking of, you know, this premiere or showing up to this thing or thinking that there's going to be pictures here. So then, you know, I'm taking pictures in a shirt and tie, you know, right. because I'm just like, oh, right. Where I'm like, oh, I guess I could be more bonkers than this. And I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah, I haven't yet. And, but also I think that, Finding a stylist, I think, is stressful, right? Because it's it's somebody who actually can, like, knows what you're into, and like, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know how to even start that conversation. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's tough too, because like I used to be one for a while, but like I I did realize the best stylists are the ones that are able to amplify who you already are versus make you look like someone who you're not comfortable being. Yeah, I appreciate people's styles and and who they are, and I guess I just don't even know what that would be publicly for me. Oh, but I yeah. think it's so cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's 
you know, and that's fine. I mean, it's you, you already are creating your own style by just you existing. I mean, I think that's the thing to, to think about. It's not so much about like the statement. It's about like, yeah, you attract people because of your confidence in yourself. Like that's, that's really what style is. You're game over. You're done. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah, matter what I mean, you wear. <laughs> would I wear, would I wear a gold cape and then show that I have a, a gold set of armor on underneath and then a gold singlet, you know? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I would. <laughs> would I, would I go little Nas X on it? People not at a Met Gala? Yeah, sure. I would. Yeah. Oh sure man. That's. That was a great fit, by the way. Three stages of fits. Yeah. And he just stood there to let them all happen at once. I was like, talk about a drag queen reveal. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love it. There was no song even playing. I don't even really know much of his music, but man, I just love that that dude's existing. (laughs) Oh, man. I do too. I do. I like that style. I like, I like that willingness to just kind of be him. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I, that's, you know, that, that's the kind of style and the kind of, fit that I think is so cool, but in like a, a more laid back version of that of, but it would still be style, um, really into a style like Donald Glover would, was, mm-hmm. uh, Chadwick Bo- Bo- Bozeman, man. Right. Yeah. That l- his looks were always so fitting for the things he was doing. But then also when you saw him out in the world, just kind of hanging out, you're like, dude, even his hangout clothes are cool. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Dang. That's that's you know? very true. Yeah. Um, on that note, what's a film or album that when someone likes or references, you feel that they understand you? Uh, film or um, understands me? Yeah, like where you're like, oh man, you're into that, you get me. Um, it would be two movies. It would be three movies. Oh, okay. Here we go. It would have to be three movies. It would be Jurassic Park, you know me. Mm. Kung Fu Hustle, you know me. And then Magnolia, you know me. If you know those three movies, then you know what, how I think. Oh, wow. That's, that's uh, an emotional roller coaster you just put yeah. me on. Yeah, because Jurassic Park is one of those movies where, A, as a movie, it's great. Yep. B, the dinosaurs they created feel real enough to me that that's what they are. Now, am I a huge dinosaur guy? I think I am. <laughs> But if you ask me what dinosaurs are what, I have no idea. Yeah. Is that crazy? So I'm like, I love the idea of dinosaurs, and that movie made me love the idea of dinosaurs, and that's it. That's it. It's true. The new ones or anything else, like, I don't need the sequel. It's just that movie made me feel like there is this crazy world. Yeah. So I, I live by that. And then Magnolia was just one of those movies where I'm like, damn, Amy Mann's a good singer. Right. And also... <laughs> And also, everybody in this movie is showing how good they can be as just an act. Like, it's just so well acted, that movie, that I'm, it feels so cool to me. Yeah, that was when I, th- I really got into Tom Cruise. Uh, in all honesty, because oh, I was like, man. oh, wow, this isn't red light, green light. This is, this is real Tom Cruise. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Real Tom Cruise, real John C. Riley. Oh, yeah. Real right. William H. Macy. Like, it is killer killer movie and then kung fu hustle is like just what i find ama- i love martial arts and i love how fucking funny that movie is. yeah that movie's pretty genius that's a good um, one yeah so those are the three movies where if you had them if if i'm working or if that's on in the background i'm usually in a great mood oh do you do you, do you watch things like in the background style like uh Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if I'm on location, if I'm, like, shooting something for a couple of months, mm-hmm. I have, those movies are on, like, my um, iPad where I can, like, you know, cast them to the TV so they're just kind of on. Yeah. As though, you know, and I can pop in at any moment and watch whatever scene is happening. Yeah, like, passive entertainment is still super, I mean, I feel like that's why everyone got into the office, right? Because it was just, oh, like, yeah. it's just on. You're not, like, eyes glued to every scene. But it's just mm-hmm. on, and it's like, uh, it's like some. It's basically everyone's cheers, right? It's it's like, yes. Yeah. Just... But I mean, uh, to go back to the beginning of this whole podcast of like why I also started getting into shape is, you know, The Office was like the first big thing that I actually got, and when I was in LA and moved to LA, um, and I got, I, I was, I was so happy I got to do it, and I was so happy with what I did 
but I was um, really affected of how I looked. Oh. And I didn't like that that's how I came across. I felt like what I did was good, but that's not how I felt I looked like while I was doing it. Interesting. If that makes sense? Yeah. So then when I watch back to it, I'm just like, I don't remember being that, like, I didn't see myself as this kind of, and maybe nobody else saw it as that, but from me looking in my own eyes, I was able to be like, that's not what I want. I know that has nothing to do with the show, and what I did was fun and funny, and I still got the office zoom in the moment of me <laughs> reacting to him, and I love that, but there was just a side of me that I'm like, I wish I was taking care of myself better so I didn't feel like this when I, and, and I, maybe I knew where I was physically and mentally shooting that, that knowing how happy I am being more, um, in touch with where I am physically and with my body that I would have enjoyed it even more than I did. Yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, that thing is on forever. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, good good and place that, will be like that too. And then obviously, yeah. you know, the other stuff. But well, like, that's what's so funny because yeah. like there's this thing where it's just like I am, you know, um, humble bragging or whatever of like one of the only actors that has like been in all of the Mike Schur universe, the Schurverse. verse Yeah, that's true. Um, which is like The Office, Parks and Rec, um, and, uh, you know, Good Place. And I think... The f I think when they put all those pictures next to each other, you know, me and Parks and Rec and me and The Good Place is close to what I am now. Right. And, you know, it, it looks like a before and during pictures, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I, I really can't thank you enough for, for hanging and chatting with me. Uh, oh, yeah, dude, of course. Well, thank you so much. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening. Our show is produced by Blamo Media. We're edited by Marlo, and our theme music, as always, by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. If you like what you heard, you know the drill. Share the pod with a friend, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, do all the deals. Follow us on Instagram for all the hot content, and if you want to talk to us or give us your hot take, we'd love to hear from you. Just give us a phone call at 917-267-2495, leave us a message no one will answer. We'll put it in a future episode. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Or email us at info at blamopod.com. And if you want to hang with us and join the Blam fam, visit patreon.com forward slash blamo, where we have tons of exclusive episodes and our amazing Slack community. Okay, that's it from me. Have a good holiday.